Hi, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com, and I am here with Harris Duran. He is the writer and the director of Fuck em Right Back. It was one of the Sundance 2022 short films, and it was so good. And I just kind of stalked this man. <laughs> 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 I, I had to get in contact because I was just, I was so into it. And I've just been, I've been tweeting it out and shouting it out and telling all my friends. Thank you so I, much. I have evidence of such, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to just kind of get in your head a little bit into just yeah. what made you think of this hilarious script. It was so funny. Sure. Um, so the the short is inspired by uh, DDM, uh, mm -hmm. who stars in it and and his world. And um, you know, uh, my friend uh, Doris Kasap, who is uh, a producer on the film with me and is the EP, she um, came across DDM. He has this amazing. YouTube that everyone should follow that's called Secretary of Shade, okay. where he basically like speaks to the audience and he breaks down politics for people. And so he got uh, some acclaim for basically reading Omarosa's book to everyone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like an adult, amazing. like book reading kind of stuff. Yeah, book reading, but like <laughs> then interpreting, be like, oh, okay, mm. so this means, and it was amazing. And mm -hmm. so she fell in love with him, mm -hmm. um, as everyone does. And um, and so she wanted to make something with him for, for years to try and like, you know, uh, elevate his platform. And, and so um, one of the things that she talked about doing was was making a film with him. Hmm. And um, and, you know, I uh, I'm really good at like, OK, um, you have three elements. You have this actor, you have a sailboat and you have you know an alien invasion and i'm really good at sort of like you making, can put it together i can put it together yeah mm. my mind works well with like restrictions like that it's like oh it's these mm. things and so i basically was like okay ddm plus music plus politics you know and i started thinking of things and then i came up with a, a feature idea which i brought to doris and she mm. loved and so we brought it to ddm and he loved it and so mm. we're like great let's do this and so then Doris and I both live in New York and we took a trip down to Baltimore to hang out with DDM and, and see his world. And, um, and on the way back, I was like, you know, I think it might be good to make a short film first, mm -hmm. you know, um, because he, you know, he's a very experienced performer, but he's never acted before. Mm -hmm. and so like, I think it'd be good to explore the world and everything. And so basically I took what was going to be like the beginning of the film and made it a complete journey, mm -hmm. um, and and that's what came of it. Um, yeah. Because sometimes you watch these shorts, and um, and this is not uh, to necessarily criticize shorts, but you kind of almost expect that the story needs you to want more in a different kind of way, like where it can feel incomplete. But um, I credit you because within that 13 minutes, although we want more, and I've told you that, y'all you know, just kept saying it, um, <laughs> it was a nice, tight story in a way that I just wasn't used to. I loved watching the colors. I love I love DDM's music. Oh, yeah. and, and I wanted oh, yeah. to, I just wanted to ask you, like, what was your experience going out of Baltimore? They've got a really, really cool music scene out there. Baltimore is such a cool city. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there a few times and it's just a blast. And, you know, DDM is like the mayor there. Everyone knows him. And, loves <laughs> him. and so, you know, he can take you around and, and show you everything. And, um, you know, I didn't know DDM that well when we started working on this. And so mm -hmm. um, after the script was written, I was sort of trying to figure out what the movie would be, um, like how to shoot it and everything, I was listening to his music to like get inside of it. And I was like, wait, this music is amazing. Mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. just like, you know, fell in love with him. And I was like, wow. And so I was basically like, can I use this music in the movie? <laughs> and then I got a yes. And so then I, you know, basically um, used it through a lot of the film, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I actually did, before we shot it, I took the songs I wanted to use and I, and, and sound design, they did a pre-edit of the film mm -hmm. using just songs and sound design. Um, and so like going in, I, I would know we're shooting this and this is what's going to be underneath. And so um, that was sort of a cool, I've never done that before, but it was mm -hmm. an interesting way of doing it. So I guess you like working in that abstract and these. So I you do. I no do. Brain. Yeah. When I love like, you know, cause, um, uh, my work has a lot of music in it and my background, I was like a theater person and I have written musicals. And so like music mm -hmm. is so much a part of it. And like movies really 
like music is like an integral part of movies, you know, mm -hmm. and I think people think of it as like, you know, score and just like a little violin here and there, but really is like so much a part of the experience, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that in a way that I think because my background has so much music in it, I think I feel that it's, it's really important, not just sort of extra, it's not like yeah. an add on, it's like, mm -hmm. this is like part of the experience and so yeah you understand um, theory a lot more than, yeah than other people would yeah there, there's something yeah. that you said that really um resonated with me and i i just it made me look at the film even in a deeper way even because i mean i got the overall message but you said it was about systems to keep people down um yeah yeah what what yeah. does this exactly mean here yeah so um you know um i DDM and I, while not having the same experience, have a lot of mm -hmm. parallel experiences. So we're both queer artists. You know, I also like, I used to be an actor. And so I worked in an office for years, you know, doing temp jobs and stuff like that. And, um, and so uh, there is, uh, you know, as a queer person, as someone like who didn't grow up with money, there's just like things in life are set up for you to not succeed because mm -hmm. people perceive your success as somehow you're taking that from someone. And so the only way that that people like a shitty boss or someone like that feels that they have power is by keeping you down. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, because they perceive themselves as so small that they can't share. Right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so there is this like, I, I must keep you down so that I can be above you and have power. And so, um, you know, uh, I think that there's, you know, a conversation happening in our country, in the world that's, you know, about. Um, that is about, you know, classism, you yes. know, where you have, you know, wealthy and powerful people who want us all to fight with each other, mm -hmm. you know, and, and put things in there and put things in the media and put things in the press to get us to fight with each other. Because while we're fighting with each other, they are stealing everything. That, no, it's you true. It's true. <laughs> so we, we all, we all get fucked. And so yeah, it's that's just true. sort of like, you know, um, and I think that it's like, you know, they know what they're doing. It's not accidental. You know, and so, and I think it's, it's sad. I think that, you know, there is a lot of division right now that I think is, um, to me, sad. I mean, I grew up in, in Queens, you know, and so, like, for me, I, I grew up where, like, you know, there's just all sorts of people everywhere, and those are your friends, and that's, like, the world that you know, and it, it does feel like there is a push for us all to separate mm -hmm. in a protective way mm -hmm. of, like, I need to protect myself. Yeah. You know, because like everyone's going to steal everything from me. Mm -hmm. And there's this and I and I find that um, painful and I find it. it it's um, like it it it, um, it fosters an individuality that, yes. that doesn't foster a community. And, yes. and no and no man is an island. Right. So, you know, That's we just right. kind of look crazy trying to stand alone and yeah. think that we can make anything happen without any kind of input. Yeah. You know, it's terrible. Yeah. And I think the pandemic has accelerated that of like, cause mm -hmm. with, with masks and everything. And, you know, um, I think that there is just a, we all retreated. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, I know this is like a light comedy, but these are the things that go <laughs> through my head that are, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think about all day long, you know, of this, like all everyone retreating and just trying to hold on to mm -hmm. what they have, um, you know, and I think the, you know, being on zoom all the time of like there's a a disconnection there i mean we get to be you know we get to interview right now and right. that's wonderful but it's also really different than like human beings touching each other being you know feeling the vibration of someone's voice mm -hmm. you know um and so i think that the zoom thing has also separated us more and more and i'm hoping that you know with the vaccines and everything that um that we can come back together and some of that healing which i think just is about being near each other mm -hmm. I, and, and you saying that it made me think about that too because uh, talking about that sort of that infighting and it's like we're fighting each other and people are just making things so political that are literally yeah. just about health and wellness like yeah. we don't need <laughs> yes. to be fighting about vaccines <laughs> yeah. and why yeah. are you fighting me in a situation yeah. where we could potentially even be like affecting each other's health i know it's just know. really mad making like i'm seeing and I it, just even in New York, you just see literal violence. Like oh, it yeah. can happen any day. I've walked outside and seen people fighting, and I'm just like, yeah. 
it wasn't this. I'm not saying yeah. that New York is some, you know, like happy, cheery place all the time. I mean, certainly not all that, but um, this is something completely yeah. different. And and that, I, like I you agree. said, that isolation, that that loneliness yeah. And, yeah. and no one having anybody to talk to, you know, and like, yeah. we've gotten like, now I'm like, I'm doing like friends will get together and do like sort of so-called virtual happy hours where like eight of us will get together. Like, hey, how you been? You know, okay, yeah. you're in Minnesota, you're in Cali. And it's just like, no one has anyone. So yeah, you're right. It sort of takes a toll, but it's just so interesting because we're talking about this being a comedy and I thought about the, the boss. It's funny, right? But I could mm -hmm. literally relate to that type of feeling of a boss that just knew, like you said, you have this goal, you have this dream, you, you want to be something outside of, you know, clocking in and out. And there's something that's very specifically that drives you, but you have that boss that doesn't maybe even have anything going. Yeah, And they just are ready to make you feel the same way that they do. And all they have over you is a simple title and power. That's just really kind of just not even real. It's just a yeah. workplace. Yeah. So I, I yeah. that, that resonated with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember <laughs> like, even in like the simplest stupid way of just trying to like, okay, I want to get my resume together, together to try and go to an audition while I'm like at work, you know, and just <laughs> always looking over my shoulder of like, am I going to get in trouble for, right, right. you know, you know um, and just like that existence. Um, yeah. I mean, I worked, I worked for like a, like a big PR firm here in New York mm -hmm. in like the accounting department and, and <laughs> when I was uh, an actor mm -hmm. and, um, and there was uh, the head of the firm was this like, you know, they called her a bulldog. Um, and she was this really I know. Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, and she was really scary. And then when she would walk around, like everyone would flee, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, and like, you can get into like the movie of her, right? So like, right. what does it take to become that powerful a woman in that, you know, male dominated industry? There's like a whole other movie to be had and, you know, different Absolutely. ways of looking at people. But when you're experiencing something, you know, I mean, it's just like trauma on top of trauma, on top of trauma. Yes. Of society, you know, of like it's everything. true. It's just like, it's, it's crazy because yeah. especially with the pandemic, because, you know, like, you know, again, there is the isolation, but then there's also just so much time to ruminate and reflect on some of the things that we've gone through in a normal world. And you sometimes can realize, like, maybe I was experiencing actual abuses. Yeah. And so that's yes. what that 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 particular scene like it was it was super funny. Don't get me wrong. But it started to make me think like, wow, when he expands this to the actual the, the, the entire vision that he has. I know there's going to be a lot of stuff that we can talk about even more because I could sit here and talk about fucking right back all day. <laughs> you know I can. <laughs> That's all I've been doing. <laughs> but I mean, I just I, I just have to credit you uh, for this vision and how you went about it. And like you said, how you in, um, incorporated DDM's music into it. But but even with uh, there's things that I mean, I don't necessarily have the, the technical experience that you do to know what I'm speaking to. But I can tell you just viscerally when I look at this, the sights and the and the sounds and just the colors. It was so colorful and so inviting in that way. So the the movie just it just like came alive in a different way. Like it's like I was it's almost like experiencing new colors. And I'm I'm being very serious. A brightness. Yeah. Well, so th that's like a combination of like some of that is you know if you look at DDM's videos, they're like very colorful and and also like some of my own work. Like I like pops of color. I think that the experience of color uh, on film is is something that like is a visceral experience. Mm -hmm. And so. You know, some of that, like that pink wall is his actual wall in his actual house, <laughs> you know? And yeah. he, de he designed um, his own costumes as he, as he does for like his videos and stuff. Wow. Um, and I put him in charge of, of Yolanda's outfits. And so he designed those. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, and then everything else, like, you know, the art direction of it was like me in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, actually like what goes where and then, you know, the party scene and all of that stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I, the reason that I do that, so I, in my very first short film that I made, the story of Milo and Annie, which had um, my friend Alicia Reiner and uh, uh, Kathy, um, oh no, I, two Kathys <laughs> in my brain just died. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Kathy Moriarty, mm -hmm. um, who, um, in it. And, and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this film. And a good friend of mine, Erin Greenwell, who's a great editor, um, I sat down with her before I shot it, you know, and she gave me like directing 101. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so I wanna shoot it like this because I wanted to have this style. And she was like, don't do that. She was like, <laughs> she was like, do style through art direction. Okay. And so 
Um, and so that made me like think about it. And so like, if you go back and see my, my first short, you know, I had the main, like I wanted this heightened feel like almost like storybook feel. So I mm-hmm. put the protagonist Annie in these like really bright colors. Like this, she entered in this like bright yellow um, and it just like popped off screen in a way that felt like surreal or unnatural. And there were, and there were like flowers that were there that we enhanced in the color correction and that I understood how color can create style. And so I, was, mm-hmm. I wanted this to be like a cartoony feel. I knew that it really needed to be, live in this like pop color world, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so when I, when I was shopping, I was, you know, I did an emphasis on like hot pink. Mm-hmm. was something that I, I I looked for a lot in terms of um, what was showing up in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So then what, um, because, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't I don't have the, the, the vision that you have. Like, I'm just, I'm sort of in awe just taking this all in because it's, to make a short something 13 minutes into what you did, it's just like, it's unbelievable. I could, I can barely do a vlog. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can talk to people, but like, can I talk about me? That, no. That's a skill. That's a skill. <laughs> that's a, it's a skill. It's, well, it I mean, is a well, skill. Yeah, but you know, this is something else that I, I I am drawn to because I can't do it. So that that's a good thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you talk about what the vision is for the longer piece, what I mean, is there anything that you can share with us to what this will be developed into? Would it keep the same name? So we're not sure mm-hmm. um what might come of it because also now that um it was made in this way, now it's sort of perceived in a different way, right? So like we're getting a lot of like, this would be a great TV show. I keep and saying so, that. And so the the longer version, like actually like left Baltimore and there was like another whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so we don't know, we don't know <laughs> um, to be continued um, uh, of what that might be. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's exciting nonetheless. I mean, I love you yeah. guys' energy, right? Thank and I'm you. sure you had a lot of fun on the set, no? Oh my God, it was such a blast. <laughs> Oh my god! And like all of the actors were so amazing, and Carrie mm-hmm. Young, who plays Yolanda, is a genius. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you know, it's a short, so I couldn't put all the stuff in there. But if you could see the outtakes of, you know, what she did, she's just she's going to be a star. She was actually just on Broadway with I Uzo Aduba, mm-hmm. and she Uzo was amazing. But she stole the whole show. She was so amazing. Wow. Oh yeah. And I was like, I'm so proud. And then I was like, Wait, I'm not your dad. Um, it just was like, it's so amazing. I'm so happy. You know, like, <laughs> that is hilarious. Um, yeah. Is there anything yeah. else that you're working on that you'd like to tell us about that we can make sure that we're, we're dialed in, plugged in, listening to, interneting? <laughs> so, um, I think, well, listening to, so there are a couple like podcast things that I did yeah. so during the pandemic. So, mm-hmm. I, there was a, a musical called Bleeding Love that uh, I'm one of the writers on. And I directed and edited, and you can, you know, get that wherever podcasts are, which is free. And that's a musical that's cool. um, that I wrote. That's like a post-apocalyptic musical, but it's a comedy. A little dark, <laughs> very dark comedy. Post-apocalyptic um, dark comedy. Okay, that means uh, I got I got to see that or listen yeah. to that. <laughs> and then I I was an editor on this one called Ghost Writer that is like a podcast movie mm-hmm. that's starring Kate Mara and Adam Scott um, that you can also listen to. Mm-hmm. So those are sort of the, and everything else is sort of like in development. But those are the things that are out there. Mm-hmm. And you can also go and see, um, I made a feature film that is not funny at all. It's a very heavy <laughs> drama, warning, very heavy drama called Beauty Mark that you can watch okay. on Amazon. Okay, um, great. Yeah. That, like Prime Video? Yeah, you can watch it there. I'm going to watch today. Oh, let me know what you think. <laughs> it's going to get all yeah. serious on you. Like, okay, yeah, well, that was good, yeah, too. <laughs> it's very heavy. It's okay, no, I, I will. I will. <laughs> I promise I will watch it, and I'm gonna get this yeah. out. I'm, I'm gonna get this out today too. I can, oh, I can do my little editing. I can do my editing. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. Then I make me a little. <laughs> then I work on the on the vlog, and then the feature yes. film. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm, I'm teasing. Well, no, 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 no. I, I <laughs> there's a certain. You have thing. a passion. Sometimes <laughs> it's just about, no, I'm serious. Sometimes it's just about starting. But, but that's what I was gonna say too. Like with you, I mean, like you veered away from acting to get into yeah. this writing and and directing mm. and just so strong in it. Like, that's interesting that you just chose a completely different path and it's just so strong. So I, I actually didn't choose it. So I, I was <laughs> acting uh-huh. and then I, I started, you know, I've written since I was a kid and like I wrote okay. musicals and stuff like that. And so I was always doing that while I was acting. And so then as I was trying to, to make Beauty Mark, my feature film, I was so focused on that, that at some point I realized that I wasn't acting anymore. Oh. And I was like, I was like, oh, 
I like that. I actually, I, I, I like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so I basically just kept going on filmmaking. So they're like, there wasn't this moment of like, I'm going to stop acting and make films. It just was sort of this thing that happened. And then I realized that it had happened. And then I was like, oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> this fell you into know? place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because That's also good. as an actor, he's like, you're only responsible for your performance. And yeah. this, I love actors so much. I get to write for actors and I, I've, you know, taught and coached actors for years. I teach at Columbia. I teach directors how to work with actors. Mm. So like where, you know, something like DDM, where he's never acted before, I was able to be there for him and let him shine. And that I would have like, never known he didn't act before. I know, he's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and sometimes that's just about being there to help show like, okay, this is the path one should go down in terms of what to do to act. Mm -hmm. And then he, then he flew, mm -hmm. but sometimes you don't have that supporter, like someone who like knows how to put you on the right path, mm -hmm. you know? And then he has so much experience, you know? And I said to him, like, I want you to bring all of that with you. Yeah. Not you haven't acted before. You're actually a really experienced performer. So just keep doing it. Right. You right. Know what I mean, yeah. rather than it's this new thing. Oh, so that's like, mm, that's a great yeah. coaching. Like, yeah, that's good. That's good. To yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I love it. No, this is great. I'm so glad right. I spoke to you. Me too. I don't know. This is awesome. My name is Coco with BlackThumb.com, and I'm here with Harris Duran. And I, I really want you guys to see this movie. And I'm not editing because the name of the movie is called Fuck em Right Back. So if you want to watch <laughs> <laughs> it's stylized, but that's what yeah. it is. So if you came yeah. here to watch the movie, then you're going to watch, but you're going to see what you're going to see. But it, but it's so good. And I think it's a really good, like, I'd almost have been really just say like a master class if you're just interested in doing shorts and just want an idea of how to do a nice, tight short that's just completely gripping, like, throughout. It's a comedy. Um, he deals with... Uh, Sort of issues with interpersonal relationships but it's all in good fun and it's really well done and he can't tell us exactly what's going to go on just yet but I'm, I'm looking forward to it i am i am definitely a fan and thank thank you just so much for meeting with me and again sundance 2022 that's nothing light that's a pretty big deal yeah, sure. <laughs> i'm so i'm so glad that you guys were there and i'm so glad that you introduced me to ddm i mean that's great yes. you know like right you yeah. know you guys gotta listen to this music it's so good yes thank you so much i so appreciate of you course. take care okay if you want to see more content like this on blackfilm.com, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell.